your dad is uh, going through it. Sorry, I can't find it. Actually, let me see. I'm a f Not yet. I don't even need to find it. Okay, man. Cool. Really? All right. All right. Um, is it this? All right. So, so anyway, it's signed. So th this video is about Diddy and supposedly like you know some of the NDAs. So a lot of people who haven't spoke about Diddy. Um, number one, I will say, and actually before I play that. Let me play this um, Dame Dash thing because I agree with him. He says, why aren't some of the celebrities who are being accused of either attending a Diddy freak off or being in there? Why aren't they just like speaking out like shit? I ain't gonna lie. Even Meek Mill is like, dude, like people have just mentioned your name too much. Could you like just speak directly to it? Like if any Meek seems to be more mad that his name is connected to Diddy than actually clarifying if he did anything around Diddy or if Diddy ever did anything around him or if he's been to a freak off. So this is why it continues and Dave Nash makes a valid point. Listen to this. But I just wish to be honest that the people that are being accused of certain things, they should just step up and be like, yo, they bugging. You know what I mean? Just dead that shit. Like, you know, this is a very transparent place and world in these days. It's very easy to say that's not true. You know, when I wasn't at that party. I didn't do what they said I did. And, you know, I remember when I would ask Jay, yo, well, how come they keep saying we beefing and how come you don't say nothing about it? He'd be like, oh, I don't want to bring no fuel to it. Now, that brought all the fuel to it. So being silent is sometimes the loudest thing in the world. So I believe if the things aren't true, because I hear the stuff that Jaguar says, and she'd be on like 10 toes down, like not allegedly. And I've been sued. For not saying allegedly. That's why I got this problem I have now with this judgment. I have been sued for not saying allegedly. So the thing she's saying, and she'd be like, no allegedly. Like, no Diddy pulls, or like, you know what? Like, you know, they'd be like, no allegedly. I would think that they could shut that down. So I'm curious. Now, I'm not saying it's true or not. I'm saying, yo, well, how come when I say the little shit, like, I got sued again by that. Again, I don't want to get sued, right? Because they take anything. But Josh Weber, that the dude that's pretending he directed a movie I directed based on my personal account, sued me in L.A. again for four million dollars for a interview I did with Earn Your Leisure, where I didn't even say his name. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? So you have to be careful. So I know, like, you can get sued for nothing. So I'm like, yo, how come nobody's suing these people? Why won't they just say no? Nah? Like, you know, I'm not calling out no names, but we all know that the shit they're saying is. I agree. I agree with Dame. But 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 I I believe I said it before, right? Um, I 100% believe that the reason why a lot of these people aren't answering the questions. Again, if, if y'all were all saying... Oh shit, I heard that act was with was with these people who were all having gay sex and blah blah blah. Nigga, the first thing I would come out and be like, yo, my name is Academics, I'm not gay. Like I would just like like instantly address it. Like not like be cryptic or be like, yo, who who started? Who started like what the fuck? Like, dog, just address it. The reason why I believe, and I think Dame Dash is kind of co-signing this. The reason why these motherfuckers are staying silent, I don't think all now, now, some of them, like, even with, like, Meek, right? Meek, at this point, I don't think he's gay. I've never thought he was gay. But now I feel like he's been in some freaky situations with Diddy, even if it was heterosexual, that he can't just speak towards... My nigga, you know if my name was being mentioned with Diddy right now, I'd be like, yo, bro, I've never... My, I've never seen his dick. He never seen my dick. I never fucked a girl around him. I never seen him fuck a girl. Like, I'll be, like, very vivid on... What the fuck I've ever been around? Yo, hey, I went to one party. I was I was just like there drinking out of this motherfucking like big ass like wine punch thing. Like, bro, I wouldn't like these people are mad quiet because Diddy has got them girls or got them dudes and they don't know if maybe 
and by the way, most of the, I would hope most of the activities they did was like probably consensual and not only consensual, like, you know, just not of that level where Diddy's being charged with, but they can't speak out to even clear their name because they don't know what is being considered at this point. They don't want to call notice to themselves. And it goes to show a lot of these guys weren't that sure about the things that were happening at these parties because none of them want to be under the microscope or even just like clear their name. They'd rather just be quiet. Nice. Pause. It's, it's so that I can't even. Yo, the nigga got a pause button like just hitting. It, 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 it's nuts. And not just for homeboy, for everybody. So I'm hoping the stuff I'm hearing isn't going to happen. I'm hoping that the stuff I'm hearing isn't true. I don't want anybody to be that dog. I don't want another blow for hip hop. You know, and I'm just trying to figure out. You know, I'm very curious. I'm very curious to know who was at the parties. You know what I'm saying? Like someone was there. You know, I'm not going to even hold you. Like, I can't pretend I don't want to know. But I'm saying, like, you know, like, you know, DiCaprio, and I can tell you stories about that dude later or at another time. But he came out and was like, yo, I don't, you know, he made, he said something. He did say something. His press, whatever they wanted him to say, he had a statement. So I want to know why there's no statement from all these, uh, like, the shit they saying is unbelievable. It's crazy. It's nuts. Yo, a part of... <laughs> A part of, like, his whole thing, I watched his whole, like, you know, I think it's, like, a podcast or, like, um, really just him talking to camera for, like, an hour. But um, it's so funny. Dame Dash is like, yo, he's like, yo, you know I'm my name is clean. Because he's like, yo, imagine the guy who's the inventor of pause. Like, people accuse me of saying pause too much. Imagine me being involved in any of this. Like, nigga, as, they wouldn't even want me there. As soon as I got in there... And a nigga is coming in the room with his dick out, just jerking it off. Pause. Like I would just, I would just be saying, pause, pause, pause. Like, yo, like they would just be like, get this guy on out of here. You know what I mean? So he's like, yo, bro. He's like, yo, I'm a vocal person. So me, like, pause comes from me when I see homosexual or homoerotic activity happening. Um, I'm gonna speak up about it. So he's like, they wouldn't have me around. And I was like. That, that, that kind of makes sense. M maybe, like, the reason why Dame Dash, like, Dame Dash is the only guy who could have some association with some of these people, just not sp oh, well, speaking out. The rest are quiet. Boy, and I've never seen, like, my legacy has never been compromised in that way. Where people are making, you know, the cartoons. You see, there's this, like, dark cartoon that would be on. I'm like, yo, this shit is crazy. Then just the fact that it's being said, it's the same thing. Like, I'm sure people want to know between me and homeboy, yo, why did you, why are y'all beefing? He's never explained that. He's never said, like, any of those things. So I just think in this time, day and age, based on the accusations that happened, not just him, everybody should just, you know, I did. When they said that those parties with me and Aaliyah and Jennifer Lopez. Yeah, bro, I was at a party with Aaliyah, Jennifer Lopez is on the pillow, and the Chinese on the pillow. I'm going to be on that pillow, you know what I'm saying? But not next to no dudes. And then I'm out. But I addressed it. You know, I, I, I'm transparent. Like, you can ask me any question. Like, I say no, you can ask me why. I said no and I... You know, he, he did make a good point. And, and then, you know, but, but he also made the point about Jay-Z, right? He's like, yo, Jay told me the reason he doesn't address it is because he doesn't want to give it light. And then he made the counterpoint by saying, well, with certain things, when you don't address it, like, it just looks even crazier, right? And I, and I kind of agree with him at this point. Because, yo, if Jay was just like, yo, bro, hey, you know, I don't even think Jay has to necessarily speak on Diddy, but just be like, yo, hey, let's, well, I don't know. So I'm like changing my mind in real time. Because here's the thing, when you're a guy who's a billionaire like Jay, my dude, you addressing this might stoke a fire, right? Let's say Jay has never done nothing weird. 
let's say he never had no freak offs or nothing. The moment he addresses this, bro, he's a billionaire. Remember what I told you about Diddy at this point? Bro, you have people who have never been intimate with him suing him. Or plan to sue him. Just because they're looking at it like, yo, dog, at this point, so many people where there's smoke, there's fire. I could kind of get in there and hopefully get some bread. I think maybe Jay's thinking that, yo, if I say something, you're going to have every girl I fucked. And you got to imagine, Jay, Jay was the guy for so long. He's probably fucked hundreds, if not thousands of women. And he settled down with Beyonce. What are those women doing now? They might not be doing that good. They might be like, fuck. Yo, I I have a different recollection about our encounter. So, so maybe that's why, you know what I mean? I guess there's no good reason to explain why people aren't denouncing the behavior or just like explain that they had nothing to do with it because how much is it is it really accusations of people who were taken advantage of or accusations of people who realize it's a easy or sweet spot to let people know that this particular person um, you know, was into some freaky or kinky shit. I'll explain it to you. You could challenge me. But at the end of the day, if I'm expecting you to consume the things that I'm doing, my products, I feel, I do believe that you deserve a certain degree of honesty. Like, why do we all have to wait? I don't want to wait. Just tell us what happened. Or tell us it didn't happen. Say something. Not just y'all, anyone that's being accused of that shit, bro, because we definitely want to know. The whole world wants to know. But when people start resigning and people start erasing their Twitters, then it just starts to look suspicious. And it, that is true. You know, it makes people ask questions. But I just wish, to be honest. There we go. Okay. All right. Anyway, back to this video. There are many celebrities will have employees, vendors, associates sign them to keep them from, you know, blabbing to friends or the tabloids about their personal life. Makes sense, right? Because if they do, there are very serious repercussions. If you sign an NDA and you break it, that is not a place you want to be. It is a way to maintain a little bit of privacy if you are a public figure. But here is the question. What if that celebrity's private life involved criminal activity? Would the rules of an NDA force someone to keep quiet? And that is what we're going to get into as we continue the conversation once again. All right, so, so, so they're talking about Diddy's NDAs. Here we go. Trafficking, transportation to engage in prostitution. The government alleges that Combs used fear, coercion, blackmail, violence to rule essentially over a criminal enterprise. And while Combs is alleged to have involvement with illegal guns and drugs, the indictment really focuses mostly on his sexual activities or alleged sexual activities, especially so-called freak-offs. Those are the sometimes hours-long sexual performances that prosecutors say women were allegedly forced to participate in with male sex workers. That Combs would sometimes participate, sometimes watch while he pleasured himself and sometimes filmed the whole thing. This is what the indictment alleges. Now, Currently, Combs is at the Metropolitan Detention Center, the MDC out in Brooklyn, New York. In a strange twist, he's in the same area of the jail as same Sam Bankman-Fried, the crypto scammer accused of bilking millions from his FTX clients. Now, one of Combs' lawyers told people that Combs, while he's locked up, he's focused, he's very strong. He's also reportedly been able to be visited by family members while he awaits trial. Mark Agnafilo, lead counsel for Combs, recently revealed that his client does not plan to take a plea bargain. He maintains his innocence, plans to fight back at trial, possibly even going as far as to testify in his own defense. I think I could do a whole episode about whether or not he should do that. Now, as a reminder, New York courts, they don't allow recording devices inside the courtroom, so we won't see or hear any such testimony directly. That's why all of the visuals we have so far of Combs in court really consists of renderings done by courtroom sketch artists. That's probably the best we're going to get. Now, Agnafilo also told TMZ for a new documentary that Combs strongly believes that this is a racially motivated prosecution, that he's being targeted because he is a successful black man. Now, when Combs was indicted in mid-September, Agnafilo released this statement, quote, 
We are disappointed with the decision to pursue what we believe is an unjust prosecution of Mr. Combs by the U.S. Attorney's Office. He is an imperfect person, but is not a criminal. Please reserve your judgment until you have all the facts. These are the, f these are the acts of an innocent man with nothing to hide, and he looks forward to clearing his name in court. Hey, talking about NDAs, by the way, those can come up in all sorts of litigation, including personal injury lawsuits. So for that, let me call out Morgan and Morgan, our sponsor and America's largest injury law firm. Look, if you should get injured, um, but now that Combs has been indicted, we're taking another look at them. But first I should ask, what should we be thinking about when it comes to celebrities and NDAs? It's a little bit different, right? Usually, you know, NDAs are pretty commonplace with celebrities um, and high-profile individuals most of the time because they have people within their purview, usually people that they employ, you know, whether it's household staff, assistants, business associates, that they want to keep certain information that those employees might get access to confidential. So a lot of times with NDAs, with high-profile people, we see, you know, provisions like they're prevented from talking about, you know, the celebrity's personal life, maybe their children, on the business side, maybe they're prevented from disclosing things about the celebrity's company, trade secrets, financial information. So they are actually. <clears throat> As promised. Good old tax stone. MDC Brooklyn. Oh, he's in the same spot as Diddy. Chat, <clears throat> I want you to remember these two these two numbers right here, okay? It's highly against the rules of MDC Brooklyn for um, <clears throat> someone to be incarcerated, tweeting up a storm, threatening big act, talking crazy, having a phone, being on spaces. So I want to, I want to bring a little light to Mr. Taxstone's, uh, Twitter. Well, he hasn't tweeted for a while, but eh, I got a memory of an elephant. I check it every day. Says September 23rd. I'm thinking he's going to be out in 10 days or so. Yeah, he's, a little, he's in a hole. That's what happens. Whenever he gets out and he gets another phone and he tweets again. Chat. We're going to put it up on screen again. We're going to send the emails. We're going to make sure he realizes. You're doing time for killing an innocent man. <clears throat> I be, hey, every day when I get up, y'all ain't gonna like chat. Y'all be so surprised how much I, how much I really pay attention to certain shit. I check every nigga who I don't like. I check their Twitter feeds. I put a lot of time into it. So, uh, Tax Stone, man, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't care what cell phone you put in your booty hole. The next time you put one in there and you finally get some service, you're going to be back in the hole. I'm going to make it a point that for the next 35 years, actually, I think you got less than 35. I think it's like 33 now. 30, 33. All right, congrats. 33. No, actually, it's like 30. It's like 30. Uh, next 30. Okay. All right, it's okay. Next 30 years, I'll make sure that when you're on here, and matter of fact, I don't even care you being on here, but I seen you tweet at me. I seen you mention academics, and I didn't like it. And the reason why I didn't like it, because you're an inmate. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so The fuck? <laughs> 
Talking about be safe, though. Nigga, you're in a cell. Shut the fuck up. All right? Um, also, I like to shit on a nigga's legacy because for any of y'all bum-ass niggas on Twitter that be like, oh, no, Tax was the GOAT. What has he done? Nothing. Just went to jail like a fucking idiot. And anytime he tweets from here on afterwards, we're going to call here. Matter of fact, this ain't the number. So this is the jail number. Um... I'm I'm gonna leak the I'm gonna leak the warden number, like the nigga who runs the shit. You feel me? You call his number when this nigga having dinner with his wife, and just be like, "Yo, why is Tax Stones tweeting that big act?" I promise you, that nigga is going to be, he's gonna be doing burpees and fucking standing. Let me not even let me not describe it. It's okay. All right. Um, chat. Don't ask me why I'm like this. I'm sorry, man. I used to like Tax Stone, but but when he was bullying the gangster niggas, now he. Tax on don't realize, nigga, you was trying to be us. Haven't y'all realized, nigga, I'm a civilian. Nobody's gonna bully me. You know why? Nigga, if Meek Mill continued with me, nigga, Meek Mill would have been serving a life sentence in jail, nigga. Or that. That's a fact. The fuck, we, we play by any rules. You know, civilians is the best way to go. Nigga, I was trying to find a conspiracy or attempted murder charge for me so bad. I just couldn't do it. You know what I mean? Um, well, he learned He learned to realize to chill out. But, nigga, I don't give a fuck. Nigga, I would testify against all these things, man. Put them in jail where they belong. Facts. Anyway. Yeah, and all y'all little Twitter, uh, YouTube niggas, y'all can make a video about that, too. Any nigga who I don't like, y'all know. I'm a civilian nigga. And that's what I'm saying. This is why, this is why Woody snitching. This is why Charleston White be winning. All y'all thugged out niggas, all y'all do is just go and sit in jail. Like us, we make sure y'all get locked up. We make sure y'all be in a hole. We make sure, yeah, nothing good comes to y'all. All right, um, what was I even playing? Okay, I was playing some Diddy shit. Ugh. I'm going to skip this. I, I thought they had like NDA details. Oh, they do have NDA details. Never mind. Oh, back to this. Sorry. I was about to skip it. I thought it was boring. Okay, so this is five shocking P. Diddy NDA details re revealed in court filings. This isn't in the indictment. This is in a civil suit. I can't remember whose civil suit. Um, whose civil suit put this up? Let me see. Is this a Jane Doe? This is not a Jane Doe. Oh, they said Little Rod. Oh, Little Rod had, had the NDA any and everything basically and then you yo chat why are you acting like y'all like surprised by me also have language that is trying to extend the person the who's basically prone to the nda to not just the person who's signing but everyone including you know people that might have worked for them their heirs which was really shocking to read so uh it's it's a really general nda and the term of it which i know we'll talk about um it tries yeah. to extend it for a very long time. One thing that us lawyers love is a long run on sentence packed with information. Got to get everything in there. So we want to break one of these down for you. So again, this is from the Jones suit. This is a copy of the alleged standard Combs NDA that he says he got from a witness. We do not know for sure if this is the real NDA, if this is an NDA that people sign, but assume. Chat. Um, so let me give you a little context. Um, the majority of people in places you're going to go, you're going to see NDAs. And it's not just a, oh, you're a freak or you're a creep or you're, you know, you're doing criminal stuff. So you think you could silence people. That's not what it is. Um, if, if you guys never knew, um, you know, if, if, if I brought a guest to Complex, Complex had a standard NDA, which means if you see us working on a show, Cause, cause you're like in the bullpen. Like if you see us working or overhear us working on a show, you can't go back and say it. You can't, you can't go back and say our plans. You know what I mean? Like, like NDAs aren't like, oh, we're doing something bad. Don't tell on us. A lot of what NDAs are is just that. Hey, listen, you're gonna be seeing privileged things, and it shouldn't be used to your benefit. And that should be it, right? So, you know, um, rappers use NDAs. Um, I mean, beyond rappers, like, you know, many, not only businesses, as I just mentioned, like complex, many people use NDAs to try to 
minimize this new era of what you see on TikTok. By the way, I have NDAs upstairs. I've had NDAs on a kiosk. So I have like an iPad. If you come to my house, <clears throat> you would sign an NDA. Um, the NDA consists of nothing crazy, which by the way, you know, some rappers are falsely, like they're falsely, like they don't know the full, what the real truth about NDAs are. If you're going to do crime, like some people think, oh, I could have you sign an NDA, then have somebody beat the shit out of you and there's an NDA. That, that's not the case. So NDA doesn't protect anyone from criminal behavior. An NDA is just almost like a legal, um, you have a legal advantage over someone over them yapping their mouth for the most part. So a non-disclosure, like for say a celebrity is like, yeah, you're not going to go into blogs and be like, especially like, say imagine, imagine most of these guys cheating on their girls. You're not going to go into blogs and then try to rule my marriage with what you heard or your experience with me. Now, granted, if there was ever a situation where the police is involved, fuck an NDA. It, there's no state in America where NDA actually trumps a subpoena or trumps an investig uh, investigatory or uh, investigatory um, um, inquiry where you're being asked about things that happened either in a house or a place. So I think there are some people who feel like an NDA means someone can never snitch on you. Those people are ill-informed. And this is why, like, most NDAs, you know, um, you should get it from your attorney because your attorney should explain to you what the fuck it means. So, again, NDAs, for anybody who have never signed one or who have never seen one, they are standard in the industry. If you go to Chris Brown's house, they're standard. Now... Has there been reports from Chris Brown's house? Yeah. But the NDAs isn't to supposed to suppress crime. It's supposed to say, if we, if you came here and we turned up and I snorted some coke or I did A, B, C, and D that isn't being reported to the cops, but you want to go and tell the world that I fucked 30 girls in a orgy and I was snorting coke without the police investigating, you can't do that. So and NDAs are pretty, pretty kind of standard. I ain't gonna lie to you. Assuming it is for a minute, assuming this is the real thing, it says, quote, Sean Diddy Combs, AKA Puff Daddy's privacy is highly valued, valued and all efforts will be made to maintain confidentiality and respect to all information and other material of any kind concerning and or related to directly or indirectly artist and or any person, corporation or other entity related to or affiliated and or associated with artists personally and professionally, including without limitation, family members, relatives and past or present uh, fiancés, husbands, wives, boyfriends, girlfriends, friends, business associates, except for information or material publicly and intentionally disclosed by artists. Wow. That is a mouthful. What do you make? What is that even saying? That is definitely a mouthful, even for a legal document like this. Um, it's, again, really shocking to read something like that. So we have the provision where it says any and all information, which is not typically standard. But then, strangely enough, it doesn't just extend to keeping information confidential about the artist, in this case, Sean Combs, but the person is also agreeing that they can't ever say anything about his business associates, friends, romantic partners, but even past and present. And the past part was really interesting because. I don't know who this person is. I've signed NDAs multiple times. I have NDA. I have an NDA if, 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 if you know, people come to, come to my residence or around me in certain capacity. They all say that. It says you can't talk about me, my business. Nigga, actually in the NDA, a great lawyer is going to say, is going to say if academics has children, which I don't. But like, you can't talk about nothing. Businesses, my mama, my relatives, my kids I don't have, my wife, spouse, I don't have. You can't talk about nothing. That's, that's kind of how NDAs are written. You know what I mean? It's kind of written to be an open end, uh, open ended. Because what um, if someone signs it before you have kids or if someone signs it before you're married, it then has a loophole once you're married. 
So they kind of write it in a way where they just kind of carve out everything personal um, and then they carve out business in the sense of, hey, you speaking on the business is almost trading proprietary things that could hurt the business or, you know, kind of disseminate secrets that could devalue the business. So, no. Without limitation, family members, relatives, and past or present, uh, fiancés, husbands, wives, boyfriends, girlfriends, friends, business associates, except for information or material publicly and intentionally disclosed by artists. Wow. Yeah, when I went to Dan Bilzerian's house, he got same shit. Um, I'm not going to lie to you. You go to young boy's house, you sign the same thing. You you meet his security with the silencers, fucking ray gun and all the shit they have. They have like, it's a crazy security. It's really an army that they get out of there. And before you get up to where young boy was at, you got to sign an NDA. That's just what it is. And it says all this shit, you know what I mean? artists personally and professionally, including without limitation, family members, relatives, and past or present. Uh, it's not illegal. Uh, NDA is not legally binding. I keep telling y'all. So like, it's it's only to, for example, you won't go to jail for breaking an NDA, but someone could then hold you legally liable, right? Oh, okay, all right, bet. So usually at the end of NDAs, you, you will say, if you fail to follow a b c and d you will owe you know what i mean e each offense will be um you know it'll say a number like quarter million dollars so it's basically you're signing that if you if you disagree or if you break these rules you will owe a quarter million dollars that's a lot of money fiancés, husbands, wives, boyfriends, girlfriends, friends, business associates, except for information or material publicly and intentionally disclosed by artists. Wow. That is a mouthful. What do you make? What is that even saying? That is definitely a mouthful, even for a legal document like this. Um, it's, again, really shocking to read something like that. So we have the provision where it says any and all information, which is not typically standard. But then, strangely enough, it doesn't just extend to keeping information confidential about the artist, in this case, Sean Combs. But the person is also agreeing that they can't ever say anything about his business associates, friends, romantic partners, but even past and present. And the past part was really interesting because you could have somebody sign this NDA who may not have ever met any of his former romantic partners before, but they're still being bound to maintain confidentiality about this. Would a court uphold that? I don't think this NDA would hold up in court for several reasons. Um, I think the language is extremely broad. In an NDA, you have to have some t type of designation as to what to keep confidential and how f you have to be reasonable in terms of how far it can stretch. Um, so I don't think this would be upheld. It's also interesting that by signing this, you are all I think that's cap. So agreeing that other people again, remember, it, it will be upheld in a civil sense. OK. Yo, you went on TikTok and did a story time. The court would, would so initial. All right, so say someone signs an NDA, right? When someone signs an NDA, and they start to break the NDA, oh, act was whatever, whatever. They get online or whatever. I hit my lawyer. My lawyer would then, you know, uh, um, either send a cease and desist quickly, remind them of the NDA, or they would instantly then file a lawsuit and request an injunction. Um, and, and obviously somebody's making crazy claims, right? Like, yo, I seen A, B, C, D, and E. And by the way, if these are non-criminal things or if these are things that the police have not spoke to them about and they're just saying it publicly, I could push for an injunction. And, and, and the court, especially when I have this NDA sign, a lot of times they might be like, yo, there's a gag order. You can't you can't tweet about this nigga no more. You can't go back on live about this guy. So uh, until we figure it out, you know what I'm saying? So that's kind of what an NDA is for. You know what I mean? Like at least shut the fuck, like giving you some leverage to shut them the fuck up if they ever try to say something, at least until a certain point. Obviously, if it gets, it gets criminal, you, you can't. We'll be bound by it too. So in the document, it says, the term you shall include you, your state, each corporation and or other business entity in which you have an ownership or beneficial interest and any and all persons and or entities owned and or controlled by you 
and or such businesses, for example, affiliates, employees, officers, directors, managers, accountants, and agents, and all your respective heirs, executors, representatives, administrators, employees, licensees, successors, and assigns. I think they got everybody. I mean, is that what is, have you seen that before? I have never seen it before. So two things jump out at me with that. The first thing is that it doesn't just extend to, let's say Jones didn't sign the NDA, but you know, anybody within their, his similar position who might have actually signed it. But then it also extends to any person that could have been employed by the person who signed it, anyone basically belonging to a corporate entity that they owned. So the NDA is being stretched, not just to apply to the person who's signing it and Combs, but but really any extended employee or business associate of the person signing it, which is really unusual. And then the other thing that jumped out at me is all this language about estate, heirs, successors. You know, that is really an attempt by whoever drafted this to get it to expand to not just during the life of whoever signed it, but to extend also beyond that and have their heirs and estates bound by it, which is really unusual. Yeah, it's pretty uh, broad to say the least. And how about this? We talked about, you mentioned the term. The term of this agreement and duty to keep all information confidential and not use prohibited material shall commence on the first date above and continue for the life of artists plus 20 years or 70 years, whichever is longer. I feel like I'm, it's a copyright claim at one point, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's 70 years. I don't know why law and crime is acting like this. Again, I've just seen a bunch of NDAs. They all say that. Basically, it, it just carves out a time to... You can't talk about this. This is uh, typically we see in copyright claims. This was also really shocking to read as well. So again, typically with celebrity NDAs and a lot of NDAs just generally, the term will usually be for however long the person is either working for the celebrity or having that relationship with the celebrity. Maybe you see instances where the term extends after a year after the person's been employed, maybe while they're trying to get another job. Here, it doesn't just last for the duration of the relationship, but the life of the artist, again, so basically saying however long Combs is alive for plus decades after so again that's something that i've really never seen one of the things i'm speculating about is whether this is kind of an emergency nda like a band-aid it might not be the standard nda okay okay okay. all right so so, so we hear basically it's an nda all right um i think there's another was there some more paperwork mm, i don't see it all right a little bit more news in right mdc here. they've got air vents that are like throughout the entire building and it goes from the top floor to the bottom floor. So what he's doing is shouting in the air vents to other inmates. It's almost like a big party line system. At some institutions, you could actually talk to people through the toilets. I kid you not. I've seen it on TV, so I'm not surprised. Do they keep a log of this stuff, though, and, and register like what kind of uh, behaviors are happening every day with him? Well, yeah, they do. Remember, he's not really a federal inmate. He's a U.S. Marshal detainee. And because of that, the U.S. Marshals actually keep a log of his activities. So, yeah, there is a log kept on him, any unusual occurrences, visitors, any type of psych psychiatric episodes. So they're monitoring him very closely. Including the talking through the air vents? Well, I mean, they don't have some cop with their, their head against the wall, but they know that it's going on. This stuff's been going on for years. So they do mm. know that it's happening, but no, they're not monitoring as far as what he's saying. And the other inmates are probably real happy to talk to them. I would think so. Um, so the news is, is that he's off suicide watch. And then there's other talk that he's getting more privileges, like more showers and better food. Okay, yeah, and I think that's the story. So Diddy is off suicide watch. He's getting a little bit more privilege. Food, what are you hearing? Well, in, while you're in the shoe, you really only get three showers a week. What and the fuck? How many times does that shower a week, Chad? And my understanding from my source says that they're letting him shower almost every day, which could cause some problems with the other inmates as far as jealousy and special privileges. And people in the SHU, they have an abbreviated commissary list. So this list that all the media is showing everywhere, he can buy this, he could buy that, that's BS. It's a special limited commissary list just for the SHU. But apparently they, some of the staff, the staff is... Sneaking food into him. Wow. Well, he's, he did he after all. So his lawyer 
told the media, Larry, that he's, quote, focused and very strong, and concentrating on his defense and preparing for... All right, this ain't news, man. Did he supposed to get special privileges, man? Sorry. Okay, now, let's talk about this. We kind of started off the stream by, by kind of, like, touching on it. I, I started telling you about this whole thing about, like, you know, lawyers and shit like that. So it appears that Diddy, you know, and, and, and I did look at the, um, I, I looked at the, um, you know, the paperwork that was filed. There was a lot of paperwork filed today by his, his legal team. So essentially, he's now trying to get himself released on bond two weeks after he was arrested, right? He's building a legal powerhouse to do so. So essentially, he was denied by the magistrate judge. He came back with his district judge. He was, he was denied by that person. Now he's appealing, and he's going to go to, I believe, the second district, uh, or I believe that's what it should be. So um, he's added two more attorneys, which is Anthony Riccio. Risho and Alexandra Shapiro. Remember, I always told you, hey, in, in a case where you're accused of sexual heinous crimes, you want to kind of get a female because it looks better when a female is saying that, yo, this guy is innocent more than a guy saying, yo, this guy is innocent, right? Um, obviously, r these people, I would imagine, are to try to help boast up the appeal for his release and not necessarily oh you're you guys are going to defend the entire trial so he's added two people to the legal team you got to remember diddy he's locked up even if he has special privileges it's still jail the guys use the private jets butlers chefs all type of people who are waiting on him at every um available whim so what, what he's doing now is trying to get out of jail now a lot of people believe that yo, this is impossible yo you offer it up 50 million dollars you and, and you pretty much offer it up everything you have and they don't want to take it. You told them they could monitor you everywhere. They could make sure you don't have a phone. They could make sure no woman comes around you. Make sure blah, 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 blah. And make sure your private jet never comes to the state so it would never fly to Florida. They still are saying no. So I don't know how or what package he could probably um, offer that would have them say yes. But at least having these new attorneys could try to help brainstorm and try to come up with a new strategy. Okay. They said, all right, bet. They're saying Tony, so Anthony, is one of the finest trial lawyers in the country. And Alexander has been called one of the best appellate lawyers. So he's gotten specific lawyers for this. So now that his district judge said no, they're in the appellate system. So there's an appellate court that's going to decide on this. So he's trying to build his own dream team of sorts. And by the way, I agree with this. It's no, it's no use of having money if you're not using it. And that one lawyer, Mark Agnafilio, even if, I don't know, maybe he ends up doing a good job, um, felt it felt like he was doing everything at once. He was responding to civil suits, ones that he's never seen. He was responding to, of course, a criminal case that he's really enlisted to, to, to handle. He was also handling PR. He was doing a lot. So you, you, you need, like if you're a Diddy, what's the point of making a billion dollars? Hire the best lawyer and everything, right? So when it gets to the appellate court, he's hired a specific appellate lawyer to try to get him out. Now, will it be successful? I can't, I mean, who knows if it's going to be successful. But I do believe it's going to be better than what he had before, which is relying on this one lawyer who, not, I'm not going to say he's incompetent, even though I do think he's incompetent. But clearly, if Diddy's paying him, he must have, you know, Diddy must have like a, handlers advisors or whatever if you're paying this guy you must think he was competent and even if he let everyone down you you hired him with the thought that he was going to be able to handle a job okay okay so yeah he's got this new legal team and we're gonna see what the fuck happens hmm wow okay All right, so that that appears to be the latest. He's switched legal teams. Um, he's 100% trying to make sure he could get out of jail. And I, you know, I don't really have a thought if he should get out of jail or not. Um, some people's barometer is that R. Kelly allegedly got bail. And, you know, 
What's the other guy's name? Fuck. No, no, no. What's his name? What's his name? What's the other guy that got built name chat? Sorry. It's fucking slipping me right now. Mm -mm. What is it? Harvey Weinstein. Weinstein. Yeah, Weinstein. I'm sorry. <sighs> sorry. So, so Weinstein had bail. And I guess he's like, you know, um, yo, here's the problem. Diddy, <sighs> Diddy has to do some self-reflection. I don't know how he's thinking or how his mind is working while he's incarcerated, but he has to do some self-reflection. Diddy, the reason why you're not let out, you have a lot of money. They, they actually want to take your money. They want to hold it. They want to freeze it. You know why? Because them having some control of your asset or having your asset as a guarantor actually helps the state in a sense because if you are found guilty and you do have to pay back some type of restitution, they have a direct way of saying even if he can't afford it by that time and he files bankruptcy, we have some of these assets that could generate revenue. The problem with Diddy is that Diddy called these witnesses. He had his people call them and Diddy got on the phone. And I have to imagine these people either recorded him or the lines were tapped. So Diddy did this essentially to himself. Like you literally allowed these people to make the point that, yo, you are harassing victims. And if you're harassing victims, who the fuck would want to let you out on bail? So it doesn't matter how much money he has. It, it's all about the principle and the process of people thinking that if we let him out, He's going to go terrorize the victims, um, especially the past victims of his case. And that might just create more civil turmoil and unrest. So, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. Okay. Wait, why is that playing? Uh, no. Okay. Yeah, so, again, uh, even with the new lawyers, I don't know if they could they could beat that burden of um, proof, but I do think he has a better chance now. Do I think he eventually gets out? Eventually, I do think he does. I, I just think it's after a couple of months. You know, he could show that, hey, listen, I haven't tried to do any of the bullshit that you guys won't let me out for. I haven't tried to contact any witnesses. You know, I've been in here not doing anything that's like, you know, um, hurting the process. And um, eventually, I, I believe they'll they'll give him some type of bail. But the bail would be like knowing that they could pick him up at any time. So. We'll see, man. We will absolutely see. All right? Yo, it's 3 o'clock. Oh, my God. Yo, Chad, I'm finna get off of this bitch, man. It's 3 o'clock, man. Uh, I'm gonna be back on tomorrow early. Yo, oh, shit. Never mind. Oh, this is what we're gonna be on back tomorrow for. So, actually, I'm gonna tell you exactly when we're gonna be back on. I don't even know I'm this, this excited. It's, it's 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 not it's not a good thing. So apparently, yo, why is Pluto crying? He should be fucking sleeping. I hear him upstairs. Um. Okay. So the lawyer tomorrow. Oh, I'm a, I'm gonna be back on at 1 p.m. Eastern. So I'm gonna get on an hour before. So 1 p.m. Eastern. So they said a hundred victims of Diddy is going to be doing a class action lawsuit against him for sexual exploitation and other things the law firm the busby law firm is doing a press conference at 1 p.m central time which is 2 p.m eastern time so i'll get on at one so i'll be back on at one o'clock and i'll and i'll give y'all like seven eight hours tomorrow so if i get on at one tomorrow i'll get off at like eight or nine it's okay so i'll, I'll get back on um tomorrow at one we'll do the press conference there's probably a couple topics we didn't cover there's a few like small topics I don't really care to cover right now because it's like three o'clock and and it involves like for example like six hundred breezy and shit like that getting like you know what I mean some guy saying trolling him on on like a plane so we'll we'll get to that tomorrow but 
Um, chat, I'm going to stream this live, which is the press conference by this Ava Law Group. Again, I, I want to keep saying, you know, just out of the interest of fairness, I don't know if Diddy's guilty or innocent. I am a bystander and a witness to these allegations, and I'm using my own opinion to try to, like, you know, kind of, you know, try to make sense of them, whether I think, oh, okay, Diddy, whatever, or I'm like, mm, don't make sense. Just to let you guys know, I don't want you guys to think I'm, like I'm trying to, like, play defense for him or, you know, I'm insanely biased against him. So that's what it is. So, chat, tomorrow we'll be back on at 1 p.m. Eastern. And um, we uh, at once I'm on for an hour, it will be 2 p.m. Central Time, and that will be the time when we will see this new press conference, and we'll go from there. All right, chat? I do love y'all. I did see a couple of donations. By the way, while you guys are on here, for anyone who's watching the academy.shop, please go check it out. Anything you like on there, you know, please make sure you support. So the academy.shop, but... Let me see, make sure I, okay. There were some donations. Thank you guys, by the way. Okay, great. Um, Vic wanted me to interview J3, hit a J3. Look like he's gonna be interviewed by um, WAC 100. Bozo was like, I'm confused, how could Drake sue? We saw him talking to Millie, saw him with a 17 year old, saw him watch Snow and reading the S trafficking commandments. How would Drake disprove the lyrics? Yeah, I, you know, again, we we can confirmed it. Drake said he's not sending a, you know, a cease and desist in the lawsuit. Just to let you know, a cease and desist could be used in a lawsuit, right? So, like, it, imagine I'm saying you're doing something to, de, like, deprave me of my rights, or you're stealing or you're doing something that's hurting my brand or whatever the case is. I send you a cease and desist to hopefully hope you could change your behavior without us going to court. Or even if it's some amicable shit, like sometimes cease and desist might say, hey, you have 48 hours to issue an apology, take down that post, and blah, blah. Yeah, that happens, right? Um, That's very much different from a lawsuit. A cease and desist is usually the preemptive step to a lawsuit, okay? Bozo also said a rap beef where you beat your opponent so bad he sues you for damage is crazy. Kendrick gets to go. Bozo loves Kendrick. I ain't gonna lie. Um, Queen, Jelena Sparks says, I'm a K-Dot stan. If Drake did send a, a, a cease and desist, I don't blame him. Performing that I'm a pedophile biggest TV night, as a fan, I would hope he wouldn't perform it. Queen, why would you think he's hired to do the show, though? I think the NFL is in a pickle. I think they're trying to figure out how can we get him to be organic and perform what he needs to perform without our audience, our target audience, and even us being involved, not in a, in a litigation where Drake's going to sue, but we wouldn't want the headlines to to walk away from saying, Kendrick perform the pedophile anthem. You know what I mean? Or Kendrick called Drake a pet. Like, that wouldn't help the NFL, right? By the way, Eze, thank you for becoming a member. I really appreciate you. Queen says, yo, there's a freak o coming from Drake. And he also said this is freak activity. He was talking about the, uh, she's talking about the uh, the whole list with um, French Montana. Prince Ali Rogers says, when, K when K Dot performed at the Super Bowl in 2022, he censored and we hate Popo doing all right. Did he? I didn't know that. If he could shit on Drake on that stage but not speak about police brutality, that nigga's a dub. I don't give a fuck. So as everybody knows, Diddy, a.k.a. the Diddler, he has finally been locked up. And it's been crazy ever since. I'm not going to lie. Now, you feel me? He's in prison. Or, let me rephrase, jail. On suicide watch. You feel me? That's kind of a crazy life. You go from being a billionaire mansions all over the world having free calves you feel me with women and men you feel me thousand bottles of white, uh, baby oil man even though i do think diddy is very 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 guilty i want to ask one thing if what diddy did is considered sex trafficking isn't like what every like high profile entertainer who like fly women from Instagram 
like all over just for sex sex trafficking as well like that's a question i just want to ask you feel me because you gotta call a spade a spade if diddy's doing it then you gotta look at air almost every celebrity who does the same thing or who throws big big parties and you feel me women pull up and they do crazy freaky stuff at those parties bro like i don't know <clears throat> so like and i only asked that because i really sat there and think and thought to myself like man i don't necessarily feel bad for diddy but and i don't think diddy is a good person and i think he probably when they really investigate deeper into diddy they're gonna find way other stuff besides all this freak stuff that he probably did do man this freaky stuff and all the allegations and stuff like how you see all the executives and stuff stepping down diddy is coming bro i i no no diddy but diddy is coming no diddy i think he's gonna expose everyone and like labels are scared and they're trying to get rid of everyone and everything if diddy ends up like the dude the who's that one dude with the island who killed himself if diddy ends up like that we should not sit there and act surprised you feel me but it's your boy big act news make sure you like come subscribe i'd say pray for diddy honestly pray for diddy man he probably needs it right now it's probably feeling probably meet mills on the phone with him trying to keep him calm I mean, he's probably telling me, Mel, send me some pics over. You feel me? I miss you. I like when you do it like that. But if you miss it, boy, big actors, make sure you like, come, subscribe, and I am out.